This is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 19th of March, 2021. Today, we have new regulations in Massachusetts. American Cancer Society is being a hypocrite in Kentucky. Marijuana dispensaries in Missouri start selling vapes. We have increased tax news in Malaysia. New Zealand government, remember last week we were talking about the New Zealand government and how they just released a report that their uh, tobacco tax revenue is half of what it was the year before? Well, now they've got a new proposed vaping amendment bill that includes partial flavor ban. Yeah, and it's already got an unexpected consequence. I mean, the bill was just introduced, and now there's already a consequence of it. Well, I also have an awesome Bloomberg article published in the Brussels Times. And I've come to realize that vaping has an image problem in the European Union, but that doesn't stop an independent retail store magazine informing its members that vaping is the most popular aid to quit smoking because it works. We also have a Eureka Alert scientific paper examining gene expression when exposed to electronic cigarette aerosol. Well, more like the lack thereof. And I got a spiked article telling governments and media to stop spreading needless fear about vaping because it's costing people their lives. You know why? Because vaping is a life-saving technology. Ain't nothing to it but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and here's the news this week. I took last week off for my 50th birthday and jumped back into it today going, all right, what do we got? What do we got today? Well, it's got some good news. Got some bad news. Got some news that makes you go, what? I have a sub of mine that um, has contacted me on Facebook a couple different times, asking different questions and whatnot. And he left a comment on my 200 uh, sub thank you video, vape vlog, saying that, you know, he fell off the wagon and uh, smoked a cigarette. And I'm like, okay, I mean, I understand you fall off the wagon. You know, times are tough. Cigarettes are readily available in every street corner, every convenience store, every gas station, most of the supermarkets, some of the pharmacies. I mean, vaping. That's a pain in the ass to try and get a hold of in some places in this country. And now, with the impending vape mail ban, it's just going to get worse. So I'm looking around, I'm going, all right, well, let me me focus on the northeast segment of the country, because that's where he lives. And I'm like, is there some new legislation there or something I don't know about? Well, couldn't find anything in the state that he lives in, but still some bad news. Massachusetts... Fallmouth Board of Health voted Monday to revise two local tobacco regulations regarding exposure and sales. Aww. Yeah. If Massachusetts isn't hard enough on the vaping industry, well, Fallmouth now decides that they need to impose some additional restrictions. Yeah. How about new? Obviously. It's all because of the kiddies. We got to look out for the little kids because they're helpless. And if we don't impose all these laws that fuck over every American adult, whoops, then, you know, these kids are going to do whatever they want. Not thinking about the fact that the kids are going to do whatever they want anyway, so, whoops. Your laws do not make the situation better. They only make it worse. Thank you. Get fucked. I really appreciate your efforts. Well, smoking and vaping is prohibited in any location that is now open to the public. How about new? Yeah. So no public transportation, no playgrounds, indoor and outdoor events, and outdoor areas. 
where food and beverages are served, such as restaurants, bars, taverns. Yeah. Smoking bars, such as cigar and hookah bars. Yeah, well, they're also prohibited now. So if you owned one of those in town, lock the door because you're out of business. Have a nice day. Yeah. Great. And this is, you know, in order to prevent uh, youth tobacco use. Yeah. Well, businesses cannot sell or distribute any flavored tobacco product that tastes or smells like fruit, chocolate, candy, mint, or dessert, or anything else that, you know, might attract adults to the store. I mean, the teens. It might attract the teens to the store. Seriously? These teens are not buying them in the store. Whoops. You really that ignorant? You really think this is going to stop them? You haven't gotten onto any social media platform recently, have you? Nope. Because it's everywhere. Whoops. And you don't, if you ban it in your town, you think that they're not going to drive to the next town and buy it? Nope. Or the next state? Nope. Or the next country if they have to? We talked about that last week in the news too, yeah. Whoops. They drive to Canada. Whoops. Buy it, bring it home, get on social media. They got a holiday paid for by all the stuff they brought home and sold. Yeah. But, you know, that's not going to stop you from issuing these new laws. Nope. Yeah. Because you think that the stores in town are selling it to the kids. Yeah. Well, if you're a business in that town and you were selling it to kids, shame on you. And let me tell you, there's going to be major fines now. Businesses found in violation of the regulations are going to ha face hefty fines. The first offense that you get turned in for is going to cost you $1,000. Yeah. So if you have a business in this town and you were selling vape stuff to kids, yeah, you got a $1,000 fine. And a second violation Whoops. carries a $2,000 fine, as well as a suspension of the business's tobacco product sales permit. Whoops. Yeah, for seven days. Whoops. Yeah. And then if they catch you again, Whoops. now it's going to be a $5,000 fine issued. Yeah. And a suspension of your business license for 30 days. <coughs> ah, yeah, that's in Falmouth, Massachusetts. <coughs> Beautiful. Just keep slamming the laws and keep slamming the regulations because you think it's going to change what people do. Nope. Well, there's no talking to these uh, zealots because they don't want to hear it. They don't care. Well, how about the American Cancer Society decides they don't like something that happened in Kentucky? Oh, and this might also be some news for you if you didn't know it. Well... The Kentucky legislature just decided that, well, since vaping helps people quit smoking, maybe we shouldn't tax the shit out of it and make it more expensive than cigarettes. So what do they do? Well, they just removed the 15% wholesale tax on hardware used in electronic smoking devices as long as it's not being sold with the e-liquid. So therefore it's, you know, an incomplete thing. So the Kentucky residents can now save some money, just order a bunch of hardware. Don't include any e-liquid in your cart, cause then the tax still applies. Aww. So if you just wanna buy a bunch of hardware, well, there's no tax, there's no 15% wholesale tax added now. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good news. Well, Except for the American Cancer Society being a hypocrite, you know, because vaping has nothing to do with cancer. Oh, well, except when people take up vaping, they reduce their cancer risk. Yeah, 97%. Yeah, but the American Cancer Society doesn't care about that 97%. No. They want their revenue they want their customer stream their customer base because if it, you know all these people quit smoking well then there's gonna be a lot less people having cancer and well then that's gonna cut their funding 
So we, we better stop that. Let's go against the vaping and make sure that we have plenty of a customer base. Well, it sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? Uh, am, am I an asshole for saying that? Nope. I mean, well, that's the only thing I can come up with on why they would push for this vaping tax to be vetoed, this vaping tax repeal on tobacco harm reduction to be repealed. That's the only thing I can come up with. I don't know. <coughs> well, regardless of what you think, that's what my opinion is. And I'm sorry, but I took a week off and I come back and I'm not happy with what I'm seeing here. This is nuts. Well, hey, what's going on there? Yeah, you probably heard about the nicotine and the THC and the black market cartridges that caused the Avali outbreak that had nothing to do with nicotine vaping because there is no vitamin E acetate in nicotine vaping products, and there never was. Yeah. Well, this story comes from Kansas City, Missouri. There, medical marijuana dispensaries are not going to start selling vape products. So, if you live in Missouri, well, now you can go into your local dispensary in addition to your vape shop to get your cartridges, your nicotine. Yeah. Are they only gonna be marijuana vape cartridges? Not according to what this guy said. It wasn't a law change that allowed this. It was a decision that they did and they pushed for it and got approval. So, if you live in Kansas City, Missouri, or in the state of Missouri, and you don't have a local vape shop, but you do have a marijuana dispensary nearby, well, then I'd stop in and see them. They might have some vape stuff you can get to keep you off of deadly combustible cigarettes. Yeah. Well, Malaysia, they're frothing at the mouth. Yeah, the government is frothing at the mouth because they're looking at this going, we need to change our tax laws. We need more tax money. We need more revenue to be able to run this government. And I see a market opportunity here. Yeah, because in Malaysia, the vaping industry has been around for a long time. And they've got like a million vapors in Malaysia. Yeah, over 1 million consumers using various vaping products. Well, that's a tax base. So, they're going to be looking at new taxation frameworks. How about new? Well, because they want your tax money. Fuck you, yeah. The current Malaysian vape industry is valued at 2.27 Malaysian ringgits. And if you're looking for a conversion into that, well, it's worth about one Malaysian ringgit is worth about 25 cents in the United States. So you'll have to take that 2.27 billion and divide it by four to come up with the actual dollar value of it. Well, they're looking to gain 300 million Malaysian ringgits in taxes and excise tax revenue once they get this law ironed out and figure out the exact rate they're gonna have to impose well, to get that new source of revenue. How about new? Yeah, you can take a look at the link in the description below. You want to read more about the Malaysian tax? Nope. Well, we talked about last week, New Zealand published their tax revenue. And well, it was half of what it was the year before. So talked about how they were going to be looking at you know some possible new legislation because well that's a revenue shortfall we have to make that up somehow and there were people that were begging the government not to raise the taxes just let them slide down because it means that vaping is successfully converting people away from combustible tobacco whoops 
Oh, so that it's working. So let's just let it keep working. We we don't want people to smoke tobacco. We don't want people lighting up. Right? Well, it's not what's going on. There is proposed legislation. And it's going to include a partial flavor ban. It's the smoke-free environments and regulated products vaping amendment bill. And they were looking for suggestions and submissions and comments. Well, that was until the day after my birthday, you know, and, and now they're going to be ironing out what these regulations are. And from the looks of it, well, they might have a partial flavor ban. Well, what happens when you threaten to take people's flavors away from them? Well, if you're like me, you just go buy a bunch of flavors and then you make your own. But not everybody knows how to do that. So what do they do? Well, when the vape shops close at night, you just smash the window in, you bust through the front door, and you get yourself a nice lifetime supply of vape stuff. What? What? Seriously? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Aww. Yeah, the Mata Mata vape crew store was robbed this week as thieves stole thousands of dollars of vaping products and caused considerable amount of damage. Yeah. Vape crew is one of New Zealand's leading vape shops with eight stores nationally, selling top quality devices and premier Kiwi made e liquids. Well,. They did, these people went in and they robbed a place in the middle of the night. And, well, if they're vapors, they've got a lifetime supply of vape gear. If they're not, well, then the criminals, well, they got a lot of inventory to sell in the black market. Whoops. They might not be on the black market yet, but if they impose this legislation and come August, all the flavors are gone. Well, that's going to be worth a lot of money. Yeah. Let's say you that they broke in and they stole five thousand dollars worth of e liquid, right? Well, if you just hang on to that until oh, I don't know, September, October, November, after these regulations go into effect, if they actually do impose these flavor bans, well, that flavored e liquid is going to be worth like twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, you'll be able to sell it for four times what you could sell it for. Because people are going to go into the shop and they're going to go, I don't want tobacco flavored e-liquid. Nope. What? That's all you sell now. Well, we're not allowed to have candy or fruit or bakeries or any of that stuff. All you're allowed to buy now is tobacco. Nope. What? This is a tobacco harm reduction product. Because it gets people away from combustible tobacco. Why would you want the flavor of combustible tobacco? Yeah. Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Well, we have an article that was published in the Brussels Times that I found. And because the Brussels Times is like a lot of these media outlets nowadays, plastering so many advertisements across their websites and newspapers that you literally have to jump through 20 hoops to read the article? Well, I just went to the author's actual website. They actually, pay, they actually paid for the article. They actually paid somebody to write an article for them. Imagine that. Well, here it is. This, is, this article was published in the Brussels Times, and this is actually from the author's website. Because you know, when you're an author and you write a bunch of stuff, well, then, you know, when you go to a, apply for a job somewhere or you, or you are trying to freelance and trying to write articles for different places and the newspaper editor is like, well, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you've done. Well, you can refer them back to your website where you have a list of all the articles that you've already written and all the publications that it was, you know, accepted and printed and disseminated for the world to consume. So here we have Yale. A Sowowski, for, forgive me if I pronounced your name wrong, but he published an article in Brussels Times titled 
Bloomberg's misguided push to outlaw vaping in developing nations. Yeah, well, we've heard a lot of Bloomberg lately in the news. And he's got so much money, he could spend it every single day of his life and never run out. And that's exactly what he's doing. Matter of fact, he's got businesses set up to spend his money because he's got so much of it. Well, they're not called businesses. They're called philanthropic NGOs, non-governmental organizations, because he wants to make the world a better place. As long as you do it the way he wants to do it. How about new? He'll give you some money. And you can go out and foster his agenda. Yeah, well, wonderful article pointing out all of little Bloomberg's maneuvers about how Bloomberg's charity partnered with the Brussels Capital Region Government for an initiative on air pollution and sustainability. Whoops. Yeah. He boosted his role in the World, Gover World, World Health Organizations. Yeah. Became a global ambassador for non-communicable diseases and injuries. Oh, it's not just tobacco that he, you know he's the uh, ambassador for. Because you know when you give them money, oh, they'll they'll give you all kinds of titles, whatever you want. <clears throat> Never thought I'd see the day when Michael Bloomberg would be like, well, he's kind of like a prostitute. Yeah. Well, he's not the prostitute. All the pup, all the people he gives money to are prostitutes. Because they'll do whatever they want as long as he keeps shoving money into their pockets. Whoops. Yeah, well. Vaping is better than smoking. Michael Bloomberg's money is being caught in countries all around the globe. It isn't just our world country developing nations where his money has infiltrated the government. Take a look at this article. It's a beautiful read. Points out a couple of different places. I mean, we talked about the Philippines. How about in Mexico? Just past week, it was revealed that a staff lawyer for the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, you know, one of the largest global tobacco control groups, well, he's funded by Bloomberg Philanthropies. Yeah, well, they just drafted the law to severely restrict imports and the sales of vaping devices. Yeah, it's alleged that Carmen Mandel, president of the health committee of the Mexican Chamber of Deputies, well, he contracted with a charity to advise on the law. Yeah, but he ended up submitting a draft bill that still contained the name of the NGO lawyer who wrote the law. Whoops. Oops, I guess he was supposed to take that out of the paper before he handed it in. Ah! Yeah. This is compounded by ongoing investigations into foreign NGO influence on similar policies in India, where Prime Minister Narendra Modi severed ties with the Bloomberg charity after his domestic intelligence services raised concerns. Hey, man, where'd you get all that money from? Shh, it was Bloomberg. Bloomberg gave it to me. All I had to do was change a couple words in the legislation I was proposing. Ah! No big deal. Yes. Yeah. In nations where vaping is endorsed and recommended by health authorities, such as the United Kingdom and New Zealand, real reductions in the number of smokers can be seen. And I guess Bloomberg doesn't want that because he's fighting against it. Unfortunately, Michael Bloomberg's charity keeps giving and giving and giving and has been significant and well-intended. However, the groups that receive the money for tobacco control have made the deadly mistake of equating cigarettes to the real alternative of vaping devices. But wait, there's more! And this will be detrimental to the global health on a massive scale because he is undertaking his little Trojan horse operations in every country that will let him get away with it. How about new? There'll be a link in the description below if you want to read the actual article. 
And I'll also put the one in for Brussels Times in case you like looking at a bunch of advertisements while you're trying to read articles. Okay? How about new? Let's move on. Turns out that uh, vaping image, there's an image problem about vaping in the European Union. I mean, we looked at the Eurobarometer survey before, right? Matter of fact, if you go back on some of my videos, you'll see I even, you know, contributed to it. Well, sort of. I showed people how to, you know, go about and fill it out. All depends on where you live, because that was part of the information they're trying to gather. So I had relatives of mine go and fill this out, because they live in Europe. And, well, even though they, that they don't vape, I wanted them to give an impression of what they see and what they think. Because it matters what people think. You don't have to be a vapor to put your input in. Because it matters. And it also reveals the fact that, well, the general public, well, in the last couple of years, their impression of vaping has gone way downhill. Their impression of vaping is tanked. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's unbelievable. No, no, no. It just goes to show you how effective all of Bloomberg's money has been. And if you really, really dig into the data, you could probably calculate how many people die every single day because of Bloomberg's philanthropic, philanthropic endeavors. Wow. I wonder who's got the balls to actually come up with and calculate that. Yeah, publish that on the New York Times front page. Bloomberg Philanthropies cost the globe X number of lives. Yeah, it could easily be done. All it takes is money. I wonder if Bloomberg would fund that himself. I don't think so. Well, the Eurobarometer survey shows that among those who have little or no experience in vaping, only 20% think that electronic cigarettes and heated tobacco products help smokers quit. 20%. Well, that means 80% of the people need to be educated about the truth. Oh, there's a lot of work to be done here. Vaping is better than smoke. 70% think they do not. The proportion of all respondents who believe that electronic cigarettes are harmful to the health of their users increased from 27% in 2012 to 65% last year. <coughs> and the survey doesn't ask what they mean by harmful. Because, you know, nobody has ever claimed that electronic cigarettes are completely risk-free. But there are indications elsewhere that the average member of the public thinks that the risks are much greater than they are. Yeah, we talked about that before, too. There's a percentage of the public out there that thinks that vaping is worse for you than smoking. And they constantly belittle people to tell them, man, you should be smoking. Put that vape and throw it in the garbage. I'll buy you a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> Well, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard in my entire life. Well, they don't think it's the dumbest thing in the world because looking at all the media coverage that's been put out there, well... Vaping is better than smoking. It's not good. Whoops. It's a sad day when the truth is constantly being belittled away. The scientific studies are out there and they prove that vaping is safer. It's a more effective way to quit smoking than pharmaceutical products and traditional nicotine replacement therapy products. But that information is being suppressed and discredited. And if they can't discredit the science, well, then they just discredit the person that's publishing the information. They personally attack that person to clean the slate and you know, it's back like the old days when you had the mafia. Yeah, and you disrespected the mafia. 
Well, they just take you off of the playing field. They don't mess around. Even in England, where health agencies have largely embraced vaping, the number of smokers who think vaping is as dangerous or more dangerous than smoking rose directly from 36% to 53% last year. Less than a third of the people correctly believe that vaping is less harmful than smoking. Uh, Anti-vaping propaganda is brain poison. And 40% of them wrongly believe that nicotine causes cancer. Nicotine does not cause cancer. Matter of fact, nicotine vaping has a 97% less harm than smoking. 97% less. And depending on the flavoring you use, it could be 99% less. Let's keep on vaping like our lives depend on it, because they kind of do. Vaping has the potential to make the combustible cigarette obsolete within a generation. And yet a decade after the electronic cigarettes came out of the marketplace, the European Union has 12 times as many smokers as it does vapors. Something has gone very wrong. Something has gone badly wrong. Truth is being squashed. Well, focusing on the UK, because that's where it has been embraced as tobacco harm reduction, Public Health England has released its seventh independent report on vaping in England, outlining the attitudes towards vaping and smoking in the country. And when looking at vaping prevalence among adults, the proportion of vapors who also smoke has declined since 2012. Aww. The figures vary, which according to the Public Health England is the result of different definitions of smoking status. Data from the Smoking Toolkit study shows a drop from 92% to 51%. Tobacco harm reduction works when it's allowed to flourish. Vaping helps people quit smoking. All you gotta do is let people vape. Make vaping cheaper than it is to smoke deadly combustible tobacco. No, that's not what's happening. Well, this betterretailing.com is aimed at independent convenience store owners. And it lets them know that, well, if you are an independent convenience store owner, you should pick up vaping products and sell them in your convenience store because, well, it helps people quit smoking. It improves their health. How do we know that it improves their health? Well, there's scientific studies documenting it. And here's another one that was just published. Yeah. Vape aerosol and gene expression in human lung tissue compared to cigarette smoking. Just published March 19th. That's today. And what does this study that was published do? Well, they're not only looking to see whether there's damage or not, they're actually studying the genealogical effects of vaping to see if it alters your DNA. You know what they found? Using highly sensitive toxicity testing? You know what they found out? Nope. Cells that are exposed to aerosol from vaping are comparable to cells that are exposed to air, the air we breathe around it. They also expose those cells to cigarette smoke and documented 
the damage done to lung cells exposed to cigarette smoke. Yeah, if you're actually interested in the methodology, if you're actually interested in what the actual detailed findings are, there'll be a link in the description below. I highly recommend you read it. Let's keep on vaping like our lives depend on it because they kind of do. What's the uh, findings of this study? We encourage regulators and policymakers to consider the weight of evidence that shows the clear scientific differences between combustible cigarettes, which burn tobacco and potentially harm reducing next generation products that do not. Next generation products are vapes. Vaping is better than smoking. When you compare vapes to combustible cigarette smoke, there's clear evidence that they are not the same thing. Whoops. Misinformation. Misinformation about vaping. Here's the last article of today. Good news, everyone. Misinformation about vaping could cost lives. Whoops. Well, I wish somebody would have gave the author some balls because it's uh, it's not that it could cost lives. It's going to cost lives. Ah! Governments and the media are still spreading needless fear about this life-saving technology. Oh, Jesus. One thing free market liberals and public health campaigners can agree on is the importance of education. If people don't know the risks, they can't make an informed decision. Whoops. Any status sometimes take this too far. Everyone knows the smoking is bad for their health. They don't need gruesome photos on cigarette packs to let them know because they already know it. Get fucked. But the principle, the basic principle is sound. People need the facts and educating the public is one of the primary duties of health agencies. Alas, they are failing. While campaigners have been busy demanding health warnings on alcohol and more labels on food, the public's knowledge about electronic cigarettes has been going backwards. Aww. As a recent report from Public Health England concluded, perceptions of the harm caused by vaping compared with smoking are increasingly out of line with the scientific evidence. The proportion of smokers in England who think vaping is as dangerous or more dangerous than smoking rose from 36% to 53%. And less than a third of smokers believe correctly that vaping is less harmful than smoking. And 40% of them wrongly believe that nicotine causes cancer. <clears throat> to be fair to British public health agencies, they have generally tried to debunk the anti-vaping myths and unfortunately, the situation is worse in the rest of Europe where governments have been ambivalent or antagonistic towards electronic cigarettes. The recently published Eurobarometer survey, which we just looked at in the previous article, shows that among those who have little or no experience of vaping, only 20% think that electronic cigarettes and heated tobacco products help smokers quit. One study found that 59% of Europeans wrongly believe that vaping is as dangerous or more dangerous than smoking. That study was carried out in 2018. The figure is probably even higher today, given the relentless anti-vaping scare stories that have since proliferated. And even today, you can see them proliferate across the internet and across the interwebs. The U.S. has been in the grip of a full-blown moral panic about electronic cigarettes for several years, and its junk science has dripped into the British and European press. <laughs> Experiments on mice, zebrafish, and other small animals have been inappropriately extrapolated to humans. Yeah, like we did with the mice. The cumulative effect of dozens of scary headlines has dealt a blow to the public's confidence in vaping as a safer substitute for smoking. 
the 2019 outbreak of so-called Avali, which is a shitty title, a shitty acronym, electronic cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury. They should have called it black cart disease because that's where it came from. Black market illicit THC cartridges. Whoops. Well, it was confined to North America, but it wasn't confined to North America in the media. It was a global news story. Yeah, people like to hear all kinds of bad shit. Despite what people say, they don't like hearing good news. It's boring. They want to hear the juicy shit, dripping blood, traumatic injuries. When people die, oh, people pay attention. But if you have some good news, unless you're really into the, co the, the topic of conversation, well, people just skip right past it. They don't care. Aww. It's sad. You would think people would be excited to see good news. Nope. No. Not according to the views. And it's not just, you know, me or my channel. I see it all over the place. How many people skip past good news stories? Aww. Well, dozens of mostly young people died as a result of inhaling black market THC oil that had been adulterated with vitamin E acetate. It had nothing to do with ordinary vaping, but activists, well, they cynically exploited the incident to portray electronic cigarettes in the worst possible light. The result is the people are more ignorant about vaping than they were 10 years ago when they first came onto the marketplace. Fear and suspicion has led to intolerance. Around 40% of European citizens are now in favor of banning electronic cigarette flavors. That's up from 40%. In 2017. And 71% of those who have little or no experience with vaping think that cigarettes should be regulated as strictly as tobacco. Get fucked! Well, in the United States, because of what they slipped into the omnibus bill? Whoops! Well, they're gonna be now. Matter of fact, they're classified as the exact same thing, even though they're not. Vaping is better than smoking. Why am I so irritated about this? Well, imagine if water was classified as the same as vodka. Well, they're both clear fluids. And if you drank six gallons of water a day, you would die. Yeah. Oh, man, haven't you seen that? They're clearly not the same thing. Just the same as vaping is not the same thing as smoking a cigarette. It's not the same thing as lighting tobacco on fire and breathing in that combustion. The gas is made in that combustion state. Whoops. Nothing is combusted in a vaporized device in a tank. It's heated to produce aerosolized vegetable glycerin. But they don't care about that. Vaping is better than smoking. The UK, by contrast, broadly embraced electronic cigarettes and has seen a dramatic decline in smoking prevalence. Between 2011 and 2019, the smoking rate fell by six percentage points, from 20% to 14%. By a neat coincidence, 6% of British adults are regular vapors. The only European Union country with a lower smoking rate is Sweden, where smokers have switched to the smokeless tobacco product known as snus, which the European Union, in its infinite wisdom, has banned everywhere else. Aww. But even Britain is not immune to anti-vaping misinformation, and the number of vapors has barely decreased since 2016. Millions of people continue to be dangerously misinformed. And there is a job of work to be done to educate them.
Just do it! As the Public Health England report says, greater emphasis needs to be placed on how best to communicate evidence of relative harm to smokers so that they can consider all the options available to them. It is probably too much of hope for more responsible journalism. <laughs> Bad news sells. But governments, charities, and companies need to do more to get the facts out. There's a film, and I highly recommend you go watch it, from the Yorkshire Cancer Research. And it's a great example of how to go about it. Electronic cigarettes and other reduced risk nicotine products are some of the great disruptive technologies of our time. They have the potential to make smoking completely obsolete without infringing on personal choice and without costing the taxpayer a penny. It would be a tragedy if their potential goes unfulfilled because of ignorance. <laughs> this is an amazing article. Unfortunately, I don't know how widespread it's going to get because this kind of stuff doesn't get plastered all over the place. Only the stuff that gets plastered all over the place is, well, when they make fun of people or they ridicule people or when people get hurt, the fear mongering that goes like wildfire. You know how hard it was this week to try and find the news? Until I remembered an old trick of, oh, well, when you're doing a Google search, all you got to do to get rid of things that you don't want to see is put a little minus and then what it is that you don't want to see. Because the number one thing that every news agency across the world right now is talking about is how Sean Hannity was caught because he thought he was still on a break, on a commercial break. Well, he got caught vaping on TV. He was using a jewel. So you know his name's going to be run through the mud right now because he was vaping. Well, regardless of what you think of the man or not, it's the perfect example of how bad press always sells and will always get plastered and retweeted and rebroadcast and republished on every website around. But things that actually help people save lives, stop people from getting cancer, those things, you have to go look for them if you really want to find out the truth. Uh, Anti-vaping propaganda is brain poison. Yeah, it really is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the news for today, March 19th, 2021. We've had some good news. We've had some bad news. We've got some science, once again, proving vaping is roughly equivalent to breathing air. Whoops. At least on a level of the DNA. I mean... How much more specific do you want to get? We have millions of people on this planet that vape every single day. We have people that have been vaping since the technology was first discovered. And they're still alive today. And their doctors, if they're not told that they used to smoke, well, they can't see any evidence of any damage done by smoking because, well, they've been vaping for so long that the damage has been healed. Because your body has the natural ability to heal itself. Whoops. Well, got to spread the word. My brothers and sisters in vaping, you got to spread the word. Vaping is better than smoking. And that wraps it up for today. I hope you guys all have a great weekend. I appreciate you watching. And I'll be back next week with another five on Friday vaping new science and advocacy report. Have a great weekend.